Check, check, check. Justin Hunt. Here's my conversation with the incredible Blue and Exile, all about their album of the year candidate, Miles. If you haven't heard it, punch yourself in the face. It's all happening. You sound like you're listening to the same thing I'm listening to. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I appreciate you guys for uh, taking the time to do this, man. Congratulations on the release. I love the project, Miles. Man, thank you. So, how long have you guys been work putting this together? Yeah, how long have you guys been putting this together? Good two years, man. Between two twenty twenty seventeen and twenty nineteen. Gotcha. Okay. That's a long, that sounds like a long process. I mean, I'm not sure how long it took you guys to do uh, the Flowers album or Below the Heavens. But. Yeah, well, we had an album in between that time that we decided not to put out. And we still have a lot of uh, good music uh, from these sessions as well that uh, there's definitely like a, a handful of key ones that we want to use for our, our next project, you know, but uh, they still definitely are songs that will not lose their relevance so yeah that's the thing that stood out to me about this project i mean it it sounds i was talking to a friend of mine and i was trying to find the best way to describe it it, it sounds vintage but it's still fresh it sounds, sounds like everything that you know has ever stuck with me musically over time with some new things that i didn't know i necessarily needed uh what was the process like putting this together from a writing standpoint but then also in the music set on the music side of it? Well, first we, uh, you know, I, I experiment with a bunch of different styles of beats and uh, I don't limit myself. I may be more so known for a certain sound and uh, I just, I, I, I like to shoot blue my beats to show him where I'm at creatively and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not even really expecting him to uh, rap to them. But um, I did get an album back of like a bunch of beats Blue rapping to that I didn't expect him to rap to, kind of more like uh, my, my trappier, or more electronic type of stuff. And uh, yeah, there's a whole album that uh, I guess eventually we, we realized that it may not be answering the call to Blue in Exile, you know, and so we went we went back and just and just decided to work more we we took our time with it you know Word up. right blue definitely yeah definitely it was it was a process you know what i mean we had a we did the trap record and then we scrapped that and then when we started working on the new record miles it was more relaxed and it was more like uh bringing it back home you know what i mean that's exactly what it sounds like, man. My favorite joint on there is Blue As I Can Be. Fell into the planet, knowledge born, building understanding. Draw some poems on the illest canvas, South Central Los Angeles. When niggas talk, when niggas talk, tote pistols and talk scandalous, I picked up a pen and wrote anthems, my city most champions. Right? Like, like that, um, that, that opening to the second verse stands out to me a lot, right? Because it represents Los Angeles. It talks about you know, it, it makes me feel how hard it is to be and accomplish anything, but especially in entertainment coming from this city and what a triumph it is for anyone to make it, you know, outside, outside of, of this region. But even those who don't, it's still the second biggest city in America. So it's one of the most important places on the planet. So success here is, and when I think about it, it's like that hard, but also that easy at the same time like you don't have to like if you're in vegas you got to go to la or if you're in texas you got to go to atlanta or if you're in philly you got to go to new york so you get kind of the best of both worlds which makes me feel like you know which which like really connected to me and how you described it the well, second right. thing that's the, the second thing that stands out to me and this is the question you open it with fell into the planet knowledge board build and understand in 1983 right and so that's there's a five percent of connection in there nation of gaza earth math that's being done and then later on in the album, you know, you reference like wanting to read a Bible more. You know, I from below the heavens, I'm not sure there was this diversity of spirituality that I'm getting in the messages throughout this project. Am I just hearing that, or is that something that's there? And and, and where does that come from? Definitely, 
uh, that was definite growth throughout the years, just me growing up, growing into um, different religions and learning from different religions, um, different spirituality, spiritual walks, and um, really just learning from that and, and putting it to paper, finally getting time to put it to paper, man, you know, and this project was the project uh, for that. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I mean, it's just really just powerful how the verses come out and the lyrics come out. And then at the end of that same verse, you're repping, you reminded people where you're from. You repping, we say, blue, the whole gang is me. You know what I mean? So then there's, there's a street <laughs> element, the street family that gets represented, you know. Um, did it feel good making this? Did it feel hard or did it feel natural? I know as a writer, sometimes it can be difficult to put ideas, take your ideas and, you know, put them to paper. Natural. It was a lot easier than the, like the trap album was a challenge for me. It was more so me experimenting. Um, the Miles record was just me venting, just me letting my pen move and just me being relaxed to express myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Did you guys, do you guys feel pressure from old fans ever? I can imagine what it would be like to go outside every day and I made an album that had the impact that Blue and X out below the heavens had. I wouldn't <laughs> say there's a pressure, but it's I, the way I explained it to Blue when trying to, to describe what type of album I felt we should make, I felt like it was more of a responsibility, you know, a responsibility for uh, how we perceived our favorite music and our favorite hip hop albums. Uh, especially and how you know when you know the the likes of like i don't know the gang star or something would, would you know you would want them to come out with something familiar but also something uh that is representative of uh what they've learned creatively and or you know spiritually or, or wherever the world's at and you know in an updated fashion you know uh and I don't know, I, I think we felt a responsibility for our for for our fellow hip hop heads to 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 just give something that would uh lay right into uh the history something of the timeline. Genuine. Yeah, and something genuine at the same time. Yeah. Is that is that what you said, Blue? Something genuine? I couldn't quite hear you. Yeah, something genuine. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's um <clears throat> I was, you know, I have the the Blow the Heavens tape. Obviously have the playlist. I have it on my wall up there. These are my twenty four most important albums. I got Blow the Heavens up there too. Oh I tend to listen to the, <laughs> I tend to listen to the tape more because tapes to me are dope because they let you know when you're done. <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. other music sometimes just keeps playing or then it skips to something else and wasn't listening to tapes will stop and let you know when you're done and I was thinking about that song First Things First and you have a line on First Things First where you say and I eat red meat because tofu don't move me and then on this album you got a line that sounds like a reference to a Nas reference and you say something like um, vegetarian makes the cipher complete something like that have your diet changed over this period of time too? Uh, most definitely, man. You know what I mean? It's It's been a slow process. I'm just a pescatarian right now. So I'm just eating fish and vegetables, but I'm trying to get to the point where I am vegan. You know what I mean? And I'm not uh, eating animals, you know what I mean? Mm. Doing any killing to, to appease my hunger, you know? I think there's that, I think I feel that wave in the zeitgeist. You know, I see a lot of people talking meditation. I think I see a lot of people talking different dietary shifts. I'm, I can't tell sometimes whether it's my age. I'm at that age now. Maybe people my age always been doing this, you know, or if it's something that is just different with the millennium, with things that are going on in the world. Um, but from your perspective, how has that affected your ability to make art? It has it made it easier in a lot of ways? Sometimes for me, for example, I notice that some, when I take myself out of a certain rhythm, it's more difficult <laughs> for me to do things I used to do within that zone. But most of the time I tend to be happier with the finished product once I get past that, that, you know, that little challenge there. 
Yeah, it, it didn't really uh, mess with my writing. You know what I mean? You're talking about my diet, right? Yeah, your diet. How's it affected, you know, your writing? Uh, yeah, it hasn't really affected my writing. Um, you know, it's probably made me more hungry because being a pescatarian, you get more hungry when you're watching these commercials. You know what I mean? <laughs> Missing bomb ass burgers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> True that, man. But uh, Beyond Burger doesn't always hit the spot. It does the best. It can, <laughs> um, the song right after that, I'm a big fan of as well. I think it's called "You Ain't Never Been Blue," if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that song to me feels like, you know, putting things into perspective about how bad things could really be or how low things can really go. Um, what did you guys want to share through that track? What, 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 if there's a, a listener out there who hears that song, what do you hope they take away from it? Kind of exactly what you said, you know what I mean? Like to, to make people aware of how low they can go, you know what I mean? And like, you know, how low, you know, more so like just to let them know that you know, no matter what you go through, no matter what you go through, it's still something worse going on. You know what I mean? It's still a worse position you can be in, you know? So it's like, man, it's like you ain't never been blue, you know? Yeah. For sonically from that track, XI, what do you think? Uh, you, well, actually, Blue had uh, brought me the sample, and uh, we just linked up at my crib, and I started chopping it up. The first beat I made is actually the outro to the song, and uh, I don't know if Blue had planned for me to rap on it, but uh, it just seemed uh, kind of fitting, kind of, uh, or a pass of the baton almost from the Below the Heaven song called I Am Blue, where I also... Uh, where I end up rapping towards the end. And I don't know, it just uh, felt natural. And I think he was writing on the spot and I'm like, well, shit, I, I already finished the beat. So I just started writing too. And uh, my verse, I guess was uh, uh, that shit a little was bit. Of, <laughs> it, was a, it was a little bit about rapping about how special blue is, but also rapping about the blue that exists in the human experience and kind of uh, embracing it and, and, and going with it and uh, trying to find uh, the beauty within all that, you know, just real quick with my verse. And, and uh, I think blue is almost that time. His verse was almost just like taking pain into like bragging rights with like uh, who hurts the most, you know, how we can do that, you know, talking to, to our, to our loved ones, well, you know, shit, I've gone through this, I've gone through this, but also just to, uh, I think he's also just shedding light on uh, what you can go through and uh, to be thankful for the times yeah. when you when you find your balance. But uh, the production wise, yeah, it was just having fun. Figuring, you know, the, the, the first beat I made was a more serious take and I don't, and I flipped the beat so you couldn't, it wasn't really embodying the, uh, the character of the original sample. So uh, when I relayed it again, uh, my, my goal was to uh, still embody some of the original sample, which is a, more of a lighthearted and a jazzy vibe as opposed to the serious tone at the end of the song, which I think kind of uh, just brings it all home to represent the, the seriousness of being blue at the same time. There's a there's a sample on there somewhere. I, I couldn't place who said it, but it was describing, that's not the blues, that's the clouds. Uh, you were talking yeah. about uh, blue is the most beautiful color. It's peace, it's water, it's the sky. That's not yeah. blues, that's the clouds. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what is that from? I just thought that was beautiful to hear. Oh. I, mean, I don't want y'all to snitch on yourselves. Don't snitch on yourself. But <laughs> <laughs> it was it was this musician in Harlem who's uh, done some important records. Man, it's escaping me. As soon as somebody asks me, I, I forget. But um, we'll, we'll we'll drop the link in the comments to the okay. to the documentary. Let's do it. Um, uh, is this song called All the Blues? Is that the one where you're telling the story about Miles Davis? Yes. 
One of the yep. verses, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, is it the first verse with Miles and Charlie Parker? Charlie Parker died at Miles. Is that is that the first verse? Am I yep. mistaken? Yeah. It reminds right. it, it reminds me of Unauthorized Biography by Nas. You know, I, it's rare that I hear songs where artists is talking about another artist's biography in that sense. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that song? Because I think that stands out just in general. Um, all the blues. Well, for me, it was gonna, at first it was gonna, I planned it on being an instrumental, you know what I mean? Me and Exile worked on a beat together and uh, I kind of wanted it to be an instrumental vibe. But I had this verse about Miles Davis in my phone that I just never laid during the whole process of the album. And I was like, man, it's like this verse is like calling me right now. It's like, yo, lay me down, you know what I mean? Put me down. So, <laughs> So um, I just had to do it, man. Before the before we turned in the record, I was like, let me let me lay this down and see what this sounds like, you know. And I put it down. I played it for X, and he was like, X was digging it. And for at first, I was like, you know, I don't know if the record needs it. We had so many songs already, you know. I was actually trying to get Blue to say, yo, we don't need this one, and I don't know. It's not a strong enough instrumental, I felt, but. Uh... So then you, you, yeah, so then you laid that verse. Yup. And that kind of just tied it all in right there. I thought so too, man. I mean, it definitely, it definitely keeps the theme. I think thematically it fits. I like it a lot and it stuck with me and I learned stuff because I, you know, I, it's, I, you, one of the things I was thinking about leading into this conversation is your evolution religiously. You can always tell when people are, expose themselves to new stimuli, new inspirations, just by the nature of conversations. And um, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. And that still, to me, ends up being one of the most memorable ones because, you know, it's, it's you know, celebrating an icon that I didn't know that, don't, didn't know the specifics or a lot of the specifics, some of the nuances of his life. And I often feel like a lot of times we hear names, but we don't know much about them. Right, you have another song, you reference a lot of people. You reference Noble Drew Ali, you reference, reference the best rapper alive, that would be Sean P. <laughs> and it's like, you know, there's, they're the, it feels like those kind of breadcrumbs that you leave for people so that they can elevate themselves, if should they find interest in it. Yep, I try to do that, man. Those, those are called gems, you know what I mean? You're trying to drop those every now and then. <laughs> you a big you a big Sean P fan? Oh yeah, man. I mean, I love Sean P. I think Sean P is like so talented, bro. Especially, especially before he passed, man. I think he was doing his best work. You know. Yeah. Um, very very unfortunate. Monkey bars put him in a whole different light to me. Oh yeah. You know, the yeah, monkey bars is so classic. Mike Tyson was great. Um, it's just just weighty bars, you know. There's certain artists that have weighty bars, and I feel like there's a lot of weighty bars all over this album, man. Like this is, um, and it's topical. But you guys spent two years making it before a lot of this stuff was going on, so I just feel like you know, from a topic standpoint, the things you're talking about and looking at the world around us, this is this is perfectly placed. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's a trip listening to it. Some of it even seems to fit right along with even COVID, but uh, definitely fits along with what's going on racially in the world. But I mean, that's definitely always existed. And, um, there, you know, I think we missed a, a, a release date or two with this album. And I think uh, this was a great time for it to come out just because uh, it, it offers uh, some insight for how the world is changing and, and how to adapt to it. And then also just, you know, offers a soundscape for the, for uh, this time we have to reflect. Yeah. For the Quarantino. <laughs> you said from, you said from the Quarantino, is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> blue's, blues, blues hitting the barber tonight though. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, <laughs> so I think Dear Lord is another powerful he was, track, he, Arnie. 
he was he was like, oh shit, this is this is gonna be uh put on YouTube. I said, yeah. And he's like, damn, I don't go to the barber till tonight. It's <laughs> good, man. This this is even better. This is the yeah, this, this is the core. This is definitely the quarantine look right now. Yeah. Have you guys see you guys seen Ray Allen? He's showing all his bald spots. Yeah. Ray Allen, look, Ray Allen looked like George Jefferson. Oh my god. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> um, Dear Lord is another track, track that stood out to me quite a bit. And, um, you know, it, 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 to me, it sounds like you're imagining just a world without, some of, without religion and, you know, people just coming, coming together. Do you feel more encouraged about a possibility where that could happen or where people can come together and create great things, given now with what we see happening in the world and, you know, the reaction on different levels? Or do you feel uh more um incredulous or doubtful that that's possible um i think it's i think it's ine inevitable you know what i mean i think mm -hmm. it's definitely gonna happen um i don't think it's like immediate like i said a lot of that stuff is like thousand years down the line but i think i'm speaking on stuff that that we should change we should begin we should begin to change now that we don't have to wait you know, a thousand years to try to, you know, achieve, you know what I mean? What do you guys like think that- Getting rid of guns and bombs. Yeah. You know? I mean, I th what do you think that the average person can do in that direction. I mean, obviously everyone has a different opinion on it, but let's say someone feels like, hey, I want to see a better tomorrow. What could a person do from your perspective? Right, I what mean, let's say- do? Yeah, like, I mean, everyone it takes um, their own journey, right? You can listen to these think, albums and hear the journeys. Each person, knows. each person knows what what they're going through, you know what I mean? And know what they need to change to, uh, to be able to uh, contribute to the world, you know what I mean? To, you know, make the world a better place. They know what they have to change inside first, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And basically that's what it's about. It's about, you know, changing yourself first and then, you know, uh, using that reflection to change the world as opposed to trying to convince the world to change, you know what I mean? Yeah, hopefully that's a, a, a seed blue planted with, you know, some uh, younger kids, who knows, you know, may, may shift how they, uh, how they move. I hope so. I know there's a, I, I let people know on Twitter that I was going to be talking to you guys and I got a lot of responses. And so they submitted a lot of questions as well, but there was a few comments that were in that vein, you know, just the impact that the music had in terms of opening at least you know, these six different people outside the question askers, you know, they seem to be taking things away from it that stick to them. And, uh, you know, I had the same reaction as well. Um, what do you guys think people, how would you describe this project for people, you know, who haven't heard it yet or um, to someone who may not know about your history? Uh, it's introspective jazz hip hop. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is no. That, I mean, I think that's. I clear. mean, how, I think there's you jazzy this? tones on it, but yeah, I'd say it's. So there's songs that aren't jazzy too, but it's just a alternative yet. Uh, traditional progressive hip-hop <laughs> i don't know it's just some it's just some honest music that we hope uh can touch the um the uh acquired taste of hip-hop fans but also uh touch the uh acquired taste for people who are just fans of music in general um it's an introspective piece if i may uh say so you know with uh, Blue and who he is and how he sees the world. And hopefully people can draw for that, from that and be encouraged or guided into uh, a fitting place spiritually in their life or creatively or politically. Um, the American dream, 
with uh, the last Artful Dodger and Miguel. That felt like a, uh, well, with the Miguel part, it at least felt like a homecoming to me too, because Miguel was famously on Below the Heavens as well. You guys went to school together? Is that, a, is that true? Did I hear that somewhere? Do I remember that? Yeah, we went to high school together. What was, what was uh, were you guys friends or you guys just knew each other? How would you describe your relationship? Yeah, we were in the same crew. We were in the same crew back then, you know what I mean? We had a couple crews we were both in, you know? It's, you know how when you're coming up, you got a grip of crews you're a part of, you know what I mean? But it was a couple circles that uh, me and Miguel both were in, so we knew each other, you know what I mean, through those circles. When I look back at that time, because Miguel was coming up, he was a you know exciting young singer on, on online, coming off the blogger era and moving in. You were on freshman cover, you know, at the same time. It seemed like there was a really big, it seemed like things got really big for you guys around that point in time. Uh, you were on Warner Records, I believe, at that time before, I guess you had an album coming out on Warner, which was No York. I think, right. How would you describe, like, just the energy coming from the point in time when you have a grip of crews, you're talking about rocking shows the way you're talking about rocking them on, blue as I can be. You've got Exile, you've got Miguel, you've got other people around you who are also blowing up at the same time. What do you look back as, dare I say, because it sounds like it to me, an artist who didn't expect things to get this big. Um, how would you, if that's fair to describe, and if it's not, you know, feel free to expound on it. But what do you look at when you look at that time period? the energy that you guys, your music had brought to you and how you handled it and what the experience was like? Um, that's a deep one, man. Uh, the, the, I think it was another thing that was kind of inevitable from our crew because we worked so hard, you know what I mean? It was like inevitable that we were going to get some light, you know? And it just so happened that like the clock struck at the right time where everybody was kind of getting put on at the right time, you know? But um, I think we did everything right, you know what I mean? I have like one regret that, that uh, I wish my record would have came out on Warner Brothers, you know what I mean? But other than that, I would say there's, I don't even have regrets for uh, the choices we made. You know what I mean? I think we made great choices. I think we made great records. And, uh, you know, and the impact behind it, I, we appreciate everybody who, like, you know what I mean, who made that impact so impactful, you know? You got anything you want to add on that, X? Uh, Blue used to be in a group with Miguel called Rhythm and Blue. <laughs> and they almost got signed by... Uh, didn't High Tech was going to fly you guys out or something? High Tech, flew, High Tech flew out Miguel for the Rhythm and Blue demo and told him, don't worry about your homie. We're going to replace him with most death. <laughs> <laughs> what? And who oh was the other gosh. producer? That was High Tech. That was in high school, too. You know what I mean? We was like, what? I was like, most death is a shit. I kind of took that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad at all <laughs> we got about 10 minutes left on this um is there anything else you guys want to add before I, I before i ask some of the questions that people submitted you know for me to ask you all is there anything you guys want to say before i get distracted no we could get into it okay all right so here's some of the questions that we have from your fans <clears throat> um this is from nader Malika, what elements do you guys feel bring out that you bring out in each other? And that what elements do you guys bring out of each other that you guys don't get from other collaborators? Um, I think I bring out the piano samples from Exile. You know what I mean? I get his piano sample vibes. You know what I mean? He does, he does those beats, but people don't people don't snatch up the piano style beats like I do. You know what I mean? When he starts getting jazzy and shit, that's me. That's all my zone right there. <laughs> what do you yeah, think, well, I I think yeah, when me and Blue get together, um, I think what makes our music so good is uh the fact that we're we're able to exchange ideas creatively and he's able to 
work with me on beats just and I'm able to work with him on rhymes and we're able to share ideas and concepts and uh, almost like a feeling of what we want a song to be and and we have those conversations uh, and uh, es well especially when we're working the way we're supposed to be working with each other as we finally did with the smiles album we're able to uh, have these conversations which uh, add more depth to the, con the, the concepts and the words and also musically with, you know, uh, Blue bringing me samples or him telling me where he wants the music to go. I don't necessarily think that happens with other producers that Blue works with, if, if I may say so. True, very true. Some of them, but you know, not like all of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Me and X uh, have a friendship that goes way back, so we could always we could always rely on that. You know what I mean to help us build and create. You know. Uh, next question. It's a statement. I hey, I was at Rock the Bells in New York in 2010. I have the New York CD. Love y'all. <laughs> I, I, I was at that show too. Is that what you threw? Is that the CD you were throwing out on stage? Did you throw New York out? Was that what that was? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Rock the Bells, New York. I was throwing out the New York album for the first time right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I think that wasn't supposed to be coming out. He leaked it. Though. Yeah. Yep. That's when you just. That's when you decided to leave Warner Brothers. Yeah. Why did you decide I think that to leave? album was Go ahead. because the the label was going through so much. The label kept getting like uh like my A and R's got fired, my presidents got fired, you know, everybody that signed me, the CEOs got fired, and then the, the whole company was bought out. And it was just every time something small happened, it would be like huge delays with the whole co corporation, you know what I mean? I think his and album was so ahead of the time in left field and he, it got everybody fired. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> but I think it's weird how time works though, but I don't know why I see some kind of a, I see some kind of correlation between uh, New York and the Yeezus album. Like when people were finally, they were ready to take that from that electric electro vibe from uh, Kanye, but they weren't ready to get it, take it from Blue, or at least the label wasn't ready. Maybe it's because they just didn't have the faith. But I don't know. I don't know why I see that. No, I think label, Blue, Blue, all the Blues was people, uh, one of the, the first. All the people backing me were there. All the people backing me were there. They just got fired, so they couldn't back the project anymore. You know, and I was left with a project that you know, everybody had helped me with, but then everybody was gone. So nobody could help me finish and do the project. So I decided to leave so I could continue to work on music because, you know, there was obviously no progression being happening at Warner. You know what I mean? Yeah. So is that what you meant earlier when you said you wish your album came out? It's just, you know, you yeah, would like to definitely. have that type of look? Gotcha. Yeah, it would have been very nice, man. It was it was a it was a grand situation there, but uh too bad it didn't work out, man. Yeah. Um <clears throat> this question is from BLM. I got two. With a lot of albums nowadays shifting towards a much shorter EPS length, did you have any doubts about how the project's length and tracks like Roots of Blue would go over with the audience? What was the inspiration behind having so many guest voices? Uh, I wanted to be daring, you know? I wanted to, uh, I didn't want to be too conventional and, you know, I, I just wanted to do things that were like, that weren't going to put us in a box, you know? We have we have our own groove already, but I didn't want to do anything that, that was going to like, you know, make us seem like we were just doing the same thing over and over. You know, I was trying to make progressive moves on the record. You know what I mean? And uh, I definitely wanted to reflect the jazz vibe with going with longer songs. You know what I mean? And um, 
yeah, that's that's the main main reason. I'm a big, I'm a huge fan of jazz music and those long songs. So I definitely wanted to create some myself, and uh, a couple of them that we worked on, you know, made made the record. Say that last part again. A few a few of those records that we made long actually made the record. You know what I mean? We had oh, other okay. long songs that that weren't on the album. But the, and these weren't trap songs, right? No, no. We have we have about uh twenty other songs that aren't trap songs that we did for this record. We did about forty songs for Miles. Are you gonna release a Miles Part Two? Is there a potential for an outtake? Or so what's what's it called? Like um, Big Ghost Rehab? No, it's the other one. More fish, like more fish. Yeah, we were thinking of a more Miles, like a more Miles joint. But uh, you know, we may do it. We may get into some new grooves and just like you know, come brand new. But we, we got some gems though. We definitely got some gems in the cut. So somehow we got to get those out to the people. Up. All right, next question comes from what was <clears throat> this is from Salt in the Game. <laughs> That's a great name. Uh, what was it like to finally open up to how the industry treated you on the track, The Feeling? And for Exile, do you think the art of scratching records is a lost art form amongst producers today? Um. It was definitely easy. For, it was easier for me to open up on the feeling because it was more genuine. It was more like uh, from my heart. You know what I mean? I had opened up about some of those issues on previous records, but in other ways, more aggressive ways, you know? So for me to, to really get in touch with my like, you know, a softer side and be able to express that, you know what I mean? It was, it definitely helped me to vent, you know? Um, as far as uh, the scratching being a lost art, uh, on hip hop songs, I don't know. I I I just I just do what I feel, and when I can make scratching make sense without it being forced, it then automatically becomes unlost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't hear as much. I don't hear as much scratching as I used to, you know. And I think, I think there's so many different segments of hip hop sounds now that are, like, if you look at just if you look at the '80s, '90s, right? You can hear scratching almost in every region. Um, and the last thing I really remember that sounded scratching like to me was um, screw music out of the south. Like that's just like a slow scratch to me. Um, it's in that same vein. I don't hear any of that stuff now. I guess maybe to some degree it is, but uh, I heard West Side Guns bringing it back and, you know, some other cats. And, uh, yeah, I'll definitely always add to keeping it alive. Next question from Russo. I'd like to know how you work to keep an album with such a thematic emphasis so cohesive between Eve's unique production and Blue's unparalleled writing. What's the secret to your formula? Let's bottle it up and sell it. <laughs> Go ahead. Wait, wait, what is the question? How do you make an album so cohesive between your, how do you work to keep an album with such a thematic emphasis so cohesive between your unique production and blues unparalleled writing? What's the secret to your formula? Uh, I guess the secret would be to have a plan first and have an idea of what you want to express and how we want it to sound and then making a lot of it and just uh, having two minds like Blue and X to be able to go back and forth and argue about which songs to make the album yeah. and then having uh, two people who are so uh, particular about how the album is structured to the point to where we argue about what songs should come next or at least have a discussion about it and until it until we finally come into agreement you know it's just a matter of having creative minds with you that you trust and respect enough to uh 
have it uh, give way to what you what you want. I imagine the sequencing for this album had to be a crazy process. Right? <laughs> well, we, we, we actually kind of started with the intro, which allowed it to uh, kind of be a little bit easier. But um, still, I guess there was a little difficulty. How do you guys feel about LA hip hop now, like where it is now? Um, how would you, do you think it's in a good place? Do you think it is in a place I mean, where it's I always been? A lot more scratching. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, but are you encouraged with what's coming up? You know, there's a lot of, it's a it's a continual discussion, you know. People always well, you know, like I think Kendrick Lamar had did the album that I always hoped would come out. Like again, you know, I was like, someone needs to be able to make a contemporary version of uh, of uh, death certificate or something, you know. And I felt like he did that and still utilized the same sound and made it an amazing man. He did what everybody wants every hip hop head wanted their favorite hip hop artist to do once they made it. He made it and he still gave us what we wanted. Like that was the hugest success, you know, in hip hop, I feel like in a long time. That so. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Is that a hard thing? Did you guys, I mean, have you guys ever felt like that? You ever felt like you were in a position or situation where you had to be something you weren't? Have you experienced that? Uh, I can't even recall any, but I'm sure I have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. You know, I, I, I've taken some stabs at making some, some pop tunes, you know, just because, you know, you know, you're in the industry and there's people who are trying to make shit happen and trying to help or trying to whatever. And I've experimented, but then I, I, I there was a point where I just had to step back and be like, you know, I'm not going to try to chase this. I'm just going to try. I'm just going to do what I do, you know. <laughs> he's, back, he's back now. Yeah, you good? Cool. Yeah, yeah, my bad. All good. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, it's like you know, if an article went really far but it was mediocre, you still got to pat it back. If an article went far and it was bad, that was all the way bad. Right, if you put a bad article that went really far, that's brand problems, right? But a mediocre <laughs> a mediocre article that goes really far, pat on the back. I mean, that, that to me was like the most unexpected lowering of expectations I ever thought to see in my life. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, because if, if you do a great article that's really important and it doesn't go far, people are like, oh, that was a great article. But you don't necessarily get the same pat on the back. And this whole industry has so many stimuli that put people in those situations. I'm, I'm interested in, in your guys' perspective. It's interesting to hear you describe it that way, X. Yeah, man. It just comes to a point where you just, uh, yeah, you just uh, know what you want, know what you want to do, know what you're good at, and just do yeah. that. <laughs> um, the last question from a fan here is, what have you guys been doing during quarantine? Writing, bro. Writing. Uh, trying to write. Trying to write outside of this madness. Um, writing about the madness. Uh, you know. What about you, X? Uh, I mean, just uh, making music, going on bike rides trying to find uncrowded beaches you know <laughs> it's looking yeah. beautiful <laughs> looks blue looks real blue over there <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um and this is my last question this is a question that um i ask people with perspective and you guys have a whole lot after everything you've experienced and everything you've seen what still surprises each of you about hip-hop how dope people are, man. How really dope and talented people are because as soon as you get discouraged about hip hop, somebody comes along and drops a piece that you just were not expecting. You know what I mean? I think that new Killer Priest album is remarkable, bro. 
You know what I mean? That's like the best lyricism I've heard in years. I don't even know how to compare it. You know what I mean? Right. So I love it, man. Yeah, man. I, I love I love the passion that heads have to just keep on doing it and writing through, you know, trends and, and staying true with it. And I love seeing it come full circle with cats like Griselda and Rock Marcy or with Kendrick Lamar. Like, man, it, it's all still there and it's all can still very well be the voice of the people or just the rawness of uh you know some grimy hip hop stuff that you love, and, and it, it, it's still uh, there's still a place for it. You know, uh, it's amazing, and um, we're here for it, and we're here to we're here to uh, we're here to contribute the best we can because we love it so much, and it's just uh, it's an incredible journey. And and I, I know I I can speak for me and Blue that we're very very happy to be here and very happy to have you guys enjoy the music we make. Yeah. That's dope, man, man. I appreciate the time, guys. That's all I have. Is there anything else you guys want to say before we wrap? Thank you, man. Thank you for having us, bro. Yeah, no problem, man. <clears throat> man, you out here, st you out here stunting, X. Not look at all that. Everybody can't go to the beach, man. Be ready. Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's an epic close up. <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace, y'all. <laughs> I love that. <laughs>